My, my, my encounter with Egypt really began on this island uh, back in 1989 and 1990 uh, because this, this part of uh, Elephantina Island was uh, settled by a substantial uh, Jewish community uh, around about 750 years before Christ. And a hundred years later, around about 650 BC, they built a temple here. And uh, we, the, no remains of the temple exist. All that remains are, are the uh, housing of the, the substantial Jewish population. These people were soldiers who defended the south, they were mercenaries and they defended the southern border of Egypt at this time. Um, and then suddenly, this enormous temple is built and we know from letters that were exchanged which have survived they were written on potsherds uh, between the community here and the priesthood in Jerusalem that this temple had the identical dimensions as the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem uh, and was built of the identical materials uh, and uh, the reason I got into this was because I was researching the Ark of the Covenant uh, and its connections with uh, Ethiopia which is just a long way south of here following the Nile and, um, uh, and, and with the Holy Land. Uh, and it seemed to me, and this is the argument that I made in the book The Sign and the Seal, that this temple was built to house the Ark of the Covenant and that the Ark of the Covenant left Jerusalem not in 587 BC when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians, but actually around 650 BC when there was a monarch called Manasseh uh, on the throne in Jerusalem who was reviled for abandoning the traditional Judaic religion. And I think that, that his acts of heresy led the priesthood to remove the Ark and bring it here. And here it stayed on this island, according to my view, until 400 BC, when this temple was destroyed. There was a, a conflict between the Jews and the uh, ancient Egyptians of that time. And the conflict came about because the, the, the deity of this island is Khnum, who is a ram-headed deity, and there were objections to the sacrifice of rams by the Jews. Uh, the temple was destroyed, we do not know what happened to the community, but at exactly that time, give or take 50 years, there's a very strong tradition in Ethiopia that a group of Jews turned up in Ethiopia with the Ark of the Covenant and placed it on the island of um, Tana Kirkos on Lake Tana. It's a long walk, but if you follow the Nile system south <laughs> and branch off, <laughs> branch off into the, the branch off onto the Blue Nile, which is actually the source of most of the water in the Nile, uh, you find yourself in Lake Tana, where, where this uh, island, island is. Uh, and then from that time we've got a continuous tradition of the presence of the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia. And we have the presence of the Falashas, or the Beta Israel, the, the so-called Black Jews of Ethiopia, who practice a pre-Talmudic, uh, Judaic, uh, Old Testament Judaic religion. So this was a very important piece of the puzzle for me, as to ha explain rationally to historians how the Ark of the Covenant could have got from Jerusalem to Ethiopia by way of this island. <laughs> so right, right, that's right. my little awesome. spiel. And it was an initiation for me. After this, mm. I, I, I became captivated by the magic of Egypt. Mm. How could I not? And, uh, and that sense of, uh, of unexplained mysteries was, was key to the research that then led to fingerprints of the gods. You have, and you haven't been back here since you were doing research, I've not been research, back right? to Elephantina. Yeah. I've been yeah. all over the rest of Egypt, yeah. but, uh, but to this particular site in the Jewish temple, because of my research moved on, I'd done yeah. that, and I was yeah. looking at other things. Yeah. I'll tell you how we yeah, met, yeah. because of There's this. There's a strange Ethiopian connection there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 1993, uh, I had bought a copy of Sign of the Sea, and of course I got to know of Graham. I mean, I was not writing books in those days. And I happened to be in Cairo on the day that a terrorist attack, or rather a terrorist bomb, blew up in Tahrir Square. And everybody got spooked. And this was a perfect opportunity for me to photograph in the Cairo Museum because there was nobody. So I took the cameras, and my camera, and I went in. And uh, while I was taking photographs, I was very near the statue of Ramses II. And Ramses II is the man who supposedly uh, is part of the story of Genesis. And <clears throat> while I was there, there was a commotion at the door and uh, I noticed that a group of uh, priests from uh, the Coptic uh, church, in fact it was the Bishop of Cairo, named Moses, <laughs> Moses, 
and Lovely. with uh, two or three, I can't remember, priests from Ethiopia. They looked terrific, they had these beards and were carrying crosses. And, and as they passed near the statue of Ramses II, I thought, this is great, you know, we got Moses, we got Ramses II, let me take a unique shot. And as I raised my camera, <coughs> I was jumped by two bodyguards, they thought I, <coughs> I had a gun or something. <laughs> but then the, pre <coughs> the, the Bishop of Cairo, who felt a bit sorry about this, called me up and said, you want a picture? I said, yes. He said, come with us. And I stood with them and the bodyguard took a picture. And I thought, this is great, I'm going to send it to Graham Hancock, he's going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, Graham Hancock put it in the bottom of his files, so who is this guy, you know, another one of his fans, and forgot about me till I published the Orion Mystery, right? <laughs> yeah. I have to complete the story. After I finished The Side of the Seal, for some reason or other, I don't know why, I just, I fell into it, I fell into a depression. And I, and I was, I received, um, thousands of letters about that book and I couldn't open any of them. I was so down, I just used to stick them under my bed. <laughs> and, 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 and there were lots and lots and lots and lots of letters which I never, never opened. Now, anyway, I came out of the depression and then I learned about this extraordinary new theory about the Egyptian pyramids uh, and the uh, Orion correlation and I first heard the name uh, Robert Boval. As a matter of fact, I heard it from my literary agent because he was about to represent Robert. And I said, come on, Bill, it's just another pyramid theory. He said, no, this is serious. This is something this is something different and, and uh, you know I think you should get in touch with uh, with uh, Robert so I got in touch with Robert and went down to see him at his home and he said you never replied to my letter <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to the house and I went through the pile of letters under the bed and sure enough there it, there it was so somehow or other I think we were meant to, uh, meant to be together. <laughs> all right we'll, we'll stroll back because a lot of you want to frolic in denial right so, to Sunday, yeah, okay, so let's go back so we get as much time as we can.